Farnsworth came home first to the chain yard, leaving his diner chain for Tilly to shunt them away. Papa stopped him before he went to rest in the round house. You're taking in a chain called a kipper on the other side of the mountain. It's for the supermarkets, he told him the order. Farnsworth didn't want to crew up the mountain again, but he knew he had to do the job. Childish stood in the yard, shunting a delivery of coal to the bankers. And new petrol in a nearby depot. She was thinking of a hoop chain, for George's chain wasn't hers, even who she took it. Italy. You know there isn't a train for you. These trucks are what you sort the crew into the bunkers, Tarver shouted. Apart from another with new lines. Tilly wasn't bothered with what he was talking about. She was worried about Farnsworth. Sorry, Tarver. I was thinking of Farnsworth taking the kipper. He's been over the mountain four times or a lot. Hmm. be fine. He had the spark plugs you gave him. Papa tried to assure her. All the same, Tilly didn't think the spark plugs would be enough.
sounds was, was that the dog collecting the clipper. He holds the train to the supermarkets in every part of America and some in Canada. Once he delivered the fish in the Canadian dock, he had it who light engine. My God, we took it who, he thought. Shopping while he was home running, he felt a clank. He decided to stop, but nothing happened. Strange, why am I not slowing down? Farnsworth wondered. He tried his back brakes, still nothing. I'm sure my back brakes were working. When taking the clipper train, he thought. Suddenly, he felt himself cruel faster and faster. Farnsworth nearly had his eyes popped out when he realized he had no brake blocks. Oh no! My wheels would stop! He cried, HELP! Tilly was in Irish Hoopner taking in a delivery of plant seeds for the garden shop. She was just drinking when a horn hit the station. Hello? What's that horn blast? Tilly asked Trip. I probably think a runaway is happening. That looks like Farnsworth, exclaimed Chip. He seems to be shouting for help. Farnsworth, a runaway? Said workman, you best follow him and see where he's heading. Tell it, did you? Farnsworth, far in front, was in a state of panic, not knowing what to do. He honked his horn, warning anything to help him. A whistle hit his ear. 
children he saw were steaming with every puff she had. At last she caught up to him. What's going on? she shouted. My pig box poop. What can you do to stop me? shouted back Farnsworth. Keep behind him, called Chip. I need to try something. Chip stood on Tilly's front, flying to stand on Farnsworth's roof. With a chunk of sand in a bag, he was trying to clog up his engine. The engine swayed and lurched when climbing up the mountain. At last at the top, Got it! Shouted Chip, getting off the diesel. The engine stopped, but Farnsworth still kept on crewing. There's the bridge ahead, he warned. He's gonna fall off the crossing bridge. A small rock was on the line. Tiddly stopped before she crossed it. You all right, Farnsworth? She called. She saw him lying on his side, resting, head out of the water. He looked up at Tiddly. <coughs> Don't stand there. Get up from dock. He coughed. She, she didn't hesitate. She rushed to the train yard to find a crane, apart from getting the doctor train. Harper was surprised when Tilly ran by him. What's the rush? He tried to ask. No time to explain. Doc, another engine's hurt. Where's the crane? Right where I put it in my shed, Tilly. Hearing this news, the other ancients decided to see what Tilly was up to. Doc Thorbrook swooped did the rest. When they all arrived, 
we watched the rescue. Children moved the crane into the middle of the bridge, lured the hook down to Farnsworth. Once it got him, he was lifted back up. You lot, get him to the roundhouse. He's pretty banged up. Tilly ordered the others. I'll push from behind. They all pulled and pushed Farnsworth away from the bridge. Doc checked his bricks after they were all in the vault house. You need some rest. And a night shift man in the workshop. Tiddly or Shanshu in there. Just took to any late shifts when something breaks up in you. He said seriously. But who will take my dynasty? asked Farnsworth. I can take it. I'm responsible for any train when it's not mine, offered Tilly. But if I'm busy with anything else, George or Pete or Jebediah will do it. Right then, Tilly. Take him to the workshop, said Doc. Tilly coupled up to him. Tarver, seeing this, said nothing. He knew he shouldn't have given him an order when his brick blocks were not working. I 
I've never seen such a rescue in my years of standing in the yard. You've done two rescues for him, too. I should be thankful that you can do big things. We may think you're little, but have a strong heart, he blurted out. Tiddly knew Harper's comrade was a blessing. She hadn't had one from him for years. Farnsworth was shunted in the workshop. Then the little blue engine parked herself in her inner siding of the round house. This passed as she pulled the diner chain and people brought papers saying she did the rescue on Farnsworth. She even told a news reporter of her support on the birthday chain and explained the runaway before she rescued him from the high bridge. When next morning came, Farnsworth was better to take it again. Tiddly, as usual, shunted it for him to take. She still takes in crops from the farm and didn't mind working with a van, taking its half to the diner train. Till is still a literal engine because she is built, but she was helpful at anything when trouble would lurk. <laughs> 